Do you have fakes in your collection? Well, one of the easiest ways to find out if you are a serious investor in precious metals is to have a Sigma machine to test it. It's a really great tool to just see at a quick glance if your silver's genuine. And if maybe you've got some fakes, you wanna sort it out. Now, the UK has a new supplier of these machines, Trusty Metrics. We're gonna dive in and have a good old fun play with the Sigma Pro and see what it's all about. Hello everybody, Backyard Bullion here and a very warm welcome to you all joining me for another Precious Metal Ramble. As you can see today, we're going to be talking about Sigma Metallics machines, more specifically a full review and rundown of the Sigma Pro, which is in this very handy dandy travel case. It's been sent to me by the new exclusive UK supplier of these machines, Trusty Metrics, whose links are down in the description box below. Well worth a look if you are in the UK and you've thought about getting one of these machines, or if perhaps like me, you have the original here, which I bought from a European company at great expense and import tax, and you want to step up your game because these machines, whilst good, these originals, they do have their limitations. And the pro here is the creme de la creme of the product range. So a huge thank you to Trusty Metrics who've sent me this, not to keep, I might add, because they retail for, if we get the, uh, uh, the listing up here, for £2,845 on, the, on their website. Um, a great price though for this machine. Honestly, this is a fantastic piece of kit. And if you are a precious metals enthusiast or somebody who is selling precious metals on a regular basis and buying perhaps from the public, you really should be thinking about upgrading your testing regime. Now these are not infallible. They do have some limitations and we're gonna showcase it and all that it's got to offer here in this video or as much as I can anyway in this video. But it's a great tool. This. Here, I would say, is a fantastic piece of kit to have in the tool belt. Taking it to the next level, like this, is a really great step. And for full clarity and context, Trusty Metrics have sponsored today's video um, with a small fee for my time to film and edit and everything. Uh, I'm not here to just say you have to go and buy them. I'll be giving an honest and fair review. But what I will say is that I will be buying one of the three machines that I will be reviewing over the next few weeks, whether it be the Pro, the Investor or the Mini. So I stand by these machines. I think they're really good and I want to show them in all that they have to offer. So with that said, let's crack on and really get to grips with what the machine is all about. So first up, full product review. What I would say is that you do get a nice handy dandy travel case. You could take this out and about if you're buying from the public or if you're going to a coin fair. I don't quite know how many coin dealers would react if you suddenly you know, take out a giant metal testing machine, but I've seen it done before. Uh, it is certainly possible. What I would say is the bridge here doesn't come with a carry bag, it just comes in a big cardboard box. So it's a little bit less practical, but it's still a interesting piece of kit that we'll get to in this video for testing big kilo silver bars. But for coins, this is probably all you'll ever need to have to test coins in a pretty good degree of accuracy and certainty. Now what you get in the box, you get some charging cables. So we've got some uh, some charging pieces of equipment here and an adapter as well, which is very important for us in the UK. And you also get the Sigma Ones. We'll talk about those in a little bit as well, but you can plug those into the machine and test things uh, that perhaps are either too small or oddly shaped that can't fit in there. They have limitations. They don't do a through test, which is really important, which is why these bridges are here, but we'll talk about more on that in a moment. Um, I think that's pretty much it in terms of what you get in the machine. The machine itself is here. It feels very well built. It's well made. It's battery powered. Um, it's got its three little um, ports on the side here for the charging, for the ones, and for the uh, bridge to be connected to. I love this. This is like one of these old school monitor connections that I used to have like 20 years ago. It's fantastic to see that. And then on the bottom, you have this little handy slot for the calibration coin if ever you needed to test the machine's calibration. So. That's basically what you get. I think it's a pretty handy kit, or handy piece of kit in a handy, there we go, box and bag. So 
really good. Now in terms of ease of use, these are very easy to use. I am a complete technophobe when it comes to these types of, well not these types of machines, but any type of technology. And this is really simple. You just turn it on. There's no massive like setup requirements for this. There is on the mini with an app. I'll talk more about that when I review it, but generally this is really simple. You just turn it on, it says calibration required. All you need to do, make sure nothing's on any of the sensors and you click the calibrate button and away it goes. It won't take long either. And there we go. We are ready to go. There's a little battery indicator on there. You've got two bars here, which show uh, the, uh, the top one shows the surface level measurements of these uh, particular samples that you might be putting on. And then the second one is a through reading. And that's the big thing that makes a difference to me. The original machine that we've got here will just do a surface reading. It will penetrate a little bit through the metal. I can't remember exactly what the manual says that the depth is on that, but for bigger, thicker pieces of silver, this machine really does have its limitations. It can't penetrate through and see what's in the middle of, for example, a coin or a bar. But this does, which is fantastic. So let's crack it on and have a look at some silver, shall we? So here's silver, pure, so 909 plus. Uh, we've got here as well the ability to change the weights of it. Now, one criticism of the Sigma machines, I will say, for the UK market is we don't have the ability to change anything other than OZT, and we've got all of these different measurements here. We can't put a custom measurement in, uh, which is a little bit annoying. So there are limitations on that front, um, but you know it's not the end of the world. If you're, for example, testing, if we click here two ounces, and then you stick a big 10 ounce coin, even in a capsule under that bridge, you'll still get a reading. Now the question is how accurate that reading is considering you've told it it's a two ounce coin. But again, it's a tool in that box, in that belt that you can use to really get to grips with what you're uh, checking and testing. So we've got it set on the two ounce again. We're gonna put a one ounce coin on there. You'll see that we have perfect readings right in the middle. If we change the weight of the coin down to what it actually is, the one ounce there, you can see it hasn't really made any fundamental difference, but it is important to make sure that the measurements of the product is correct if you're doing the dimension test, which is one of the other really, really good things that comes from this machine. So if you've done this and perhaps the readings weren't quite perfect, the, there is a whole little section in the manual I should point out as well for having a look at the different readings and how to interpret them. Um, I'm not gonna go into too much detail. Essentially green and yellow are, well green is just fine, Yellow is, you really should probably have another little look at it, and red would indicate that there is a problem with the coin and you should do uh, some further tests or maybe it's failing. But you can do a second part of it, which is to do a dimension test, which is really important. With the penetrating um, measurements there and this dimension test, you can get a very high degree of accuracy. So all you need to do is press that measure button, select round, and then you'll see this green line appear and this light on here. All you need to do then is, m is line up the coin with the lines and it should meet exactly where the lines are. I hope the camera can show you there that is dead on perfect. So it's measuring the density of it based on its dimensions and then you are good to go. So that is fantastic. And then we, I think have to press the back button or the cal button. Either way, you go back to the home screen after a few seconds, still getting to grips with all the ins and outs of this machine. So it's fantastic, very, very good. Right, now let's try some gold. So if we go to metal, well, before we check over to gold, you can see that there's a whole bunch of different other metal types that you can select here. Um, it does have pre-calibrated settings, which is um, fine. It's great to see that we've got all of these in there. It doesn't have the 80% silver. This one does have the 80% silver. So it's interesting that that's not on this. I will say that the limitations of these machines is that they are based against the database of the coins that they have been measured against. So if you've got something really obscure, really awkward, really different, um, you know, there's plenty of 80% coins out there, 83% coins out there. You could, you will struggle to test them accurately on this machine. Um, but it's a really still great tool for your everyday metals. So here we're going to test some gold. We're going to test some uh, some sovereigns. I have some sovereigns here. Let's get them all up on the, uh, on the machine itself and see if we have any fakes within our batch of sovereigns. Now again, with the weight, what we wanna try and do is get as close as possible. A quarter ounce is roughly where we are with, um, with sovereigns. It's not perfect, but it is at least something. Now, I'm gonna put this underneath that bridge there, and you'll see that there's an issue, potentially, with this sovereign. And it's saying it's thin. 
Now this isn't because the coin is thin, it's because we're using the completely wrong bridge to measure it. Um, which is why there's a handy dandy second smaller bridge. So for smaller coins and thinner coins, you want to move it over to the other side. And we can see right there and then that we have an absolutely perfect measurement of green within there for that coin. So fantastic. That's a modern sovereign. What about an old sovereign? This is, uh, here we go, this is probably one of the oldest, a Victoria sovereign. How will that shape up on this machine? And we can see right there, again, perfect, right in the green. So fantastic. And it's that easy. You can just pop your coins one at a time through this little sensor here. And again, just to reiterate, the second bar here is doing a through measurement of the coin. It's penetrating through the gold from both sides. And you can see with a very good degree of accuracy that this is a genuine gold coin. So really fantastic. For all of those inner completionists in you, I will just demonstrate that all of my gold here is above board, fantastic, and all legit. One more to go. It's that simple. Really good, very good degree of accuracy. Now you can see this one, it's interesting, this has slightly lower numbers and slightly over to the left of the green. There is variation in some of the coins and the different old coins, the mints that they might be made and so on. But again, if it's in the green, it's all good. So fantastic, let's move those out the way. Now, bigger pieces. Uh, well, first of all, coins and capsules. Yes, you can do coins and capsules. That's always an interesting point. If we do a pure silver, let's put it onto the weight of one ounce. We have a Britannia inner capsule here. We pop it under there. It's reading just fine. That to me is a fine reading. If it's in the slightly bits of yellow, that's fine. If we take this out of the capsule, we'll have a quick look and see what that looks like without and it should be probably pure green. Pretty close actually to where it was before with the yellow. So, you know, it, there are some limitations on uh, capsule reading, but generally it's not a problem and you could use it whenever you want. So it's got great versatility for your everyday coins um, that you're gonna see all the time in the world of stacking. But if you wanted to perhaps go that one step higher and do big chunky bars of silver, then the bridge might well be the option for you. Now it does of course come at the additional cost um, and you will have to factor that in whether or not you're going to see enough big chunky 100 ounce or kilo bars for example. Um, but basically it's very simple to use. We just connect it up to the machine here with this uh, old school monitor cable. There we go, wrong way around. And in it goes, very simple like that. You can see the machine then says calibration required. Uh, you just click the cal button. Again, really simple to use. This is not a very technologically challenging piece of kit, which is great for somebody like me who is very technologically not great with things. Okay, so once you've got your external bridge plugged in and you press the calibration button, you are ready to go. We're going to be measuring this one key, sorry, not one kilo, this 100 ounce Engelhard bar here today. So we then place it on the machine underneath the bridge extension. The little light will come on and you'll see it's asking you for dimensions and it will want you to put in the width of the bar here. And I've measured this to be 145 millimeters. So if we go like so, 145 and click the done button, and then what you wanna do is push the bridge down on top of it and click measure. So it'll very quickly come up with the, uh, the top bar there, which is of course doing the surface level measurements. But again, that's got its limitations in terms of the uh, amount that's penetrating through the bar. The through reading is currently saying wait. It's going to hopefully give us a reading in the not too distant future. Um, I have experienced that it sometimes takes a little bit of time, but you might expect that considering it is trying to measure a full on 100 ounce Bar. I've also noticed sometimes, depending on where you put it, there we go, we see now the uh, the mark is right there in the green. Um, I have noticed sometimes, depending if it's got lots of high relief text and things like that, it might struggle to continue with its reading, but we had there a good indication straight off the bat that it was a nice reading all the way through. Um, it is still saying wait on there, but for me as a testing um, mechanism for that, that's a really good indication. Again though, it should not be seen as completely infallible again there when I sort of went to touch it uh, it just jumped off the screen to the red that doesn't necessarily mean it's it's uh, you know in the red and completely a bad bar but again it's a part of a bigger picture 
for testing that you should be looking at for these products. It's not infallible. For this, for example, what I would be looking to do is a specific gravity test. So suspend it in water and make sure that it is indeed silver. Um, so in terms of the utility of the bridge, I think it's a, a good addition to the kit if you really have a business or if you have the need to buy lots and lots and lots of big old chunky bars, it's a great additional tool in that belt. Um, so definitely worth thinking about. So there we have the Sigma Pro um, with the bridge. I think it's a really good piece of kit. And um, for me personally, it's probably the front runner of the different bits that I'm looking maybe to buy for my own uh, precious metal business. Uh, the limitations that I will say on it are that they don't always, uh, they don't always have every single coin in existence in these databases. So that's something you need to factor in. And uh, the only other thing I would say about them is that they don't necessarily give you 100 degree of accuracy. The only real way you're ever gonna get that is two things actually. You either melt it down and do an assay test on it, or you uh, put it through an XRF machine, which can sometimes cost you know, 30, 40,000 pounds for the big static machines, or so I think I looked at them, they're 18, 19,000 pounds for one of the handheld ones as well. So not really practical for your everyday stacking. But at £2,800, this is a potential uh, piece of kit for somebody with a serious sort of budget for stacking. What I would say is if you are, you know, if you're a stacker and you've got a sort of you know, half decent level of stack, you might want to consider about checking things, especially if you've been buying a lot from um, the public, from secondhand markets. If you've been exclusively buying only from big reputable dealers, the chances are that everything you've got is exactly correct anyway, but you just never know. And it is always good to have that extra peace of mind. So there we have the Sigma Pro. Thank you very much to Trusty Metrics for their sponsorship of today's video and for allowing me to have a play with the Sigma Pro. We have got the Investor up next, the Sigma Investor, um, which will be, I think, in a week or two's time. So definitely worth subscribing if you're not already to see that when it comes out. Different piece of kit, uh, different price range, and we'll show it all in due course. Otherwise, a huge thank you again to Trusty Metrics for their sponsorship. Huge thank you to all my Backyard Bullion Ramblers for watching to the back end of my videos, and to the Cool Kids Club members, I salute thee and say thank you. We'll see you on the next video. As always, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.